This video is sponsored by Skillshare. October is nearly upon us, my friends, and that means the witching hour is also. At least it is in my bullet journal and I am going all out for the spooky season with windows and with waterfall tabs in my journal and with lots of reflective and shiny accents as well. Hi, I'm Erin. I make bullet journal videos here on YouTube and I'm so excited to have you with me for this little plan with me. There are video chapters in the description and also along the progress bar underneath, so if this setup for the cover spread is a little bit long for you, I understand. It is very involved. It's kind of a two spread cover spread, if you will. I'm starting out with some black paper and I'm going to completely cover the right page of this spread with it because I wanted a lot of contrast and a lot of darkness in this theme, which is very unusual for me. And I'm making sure there's glue tape all the way across the page because we're going to be cutting a window out of the center of this page and I wanted to make sure that the paper around it stays where it's supposed to. I've used these frames before in my August setup and they are making another appearance today. I worked out later on that I didn't really need to cut the middle out of these windows. Much like what I did in a window in my February setup, I could have just stuck another one on the other side of the page and it would have made this kind of clear space in the middle, but I didn't realize at the time I was setting this part up that that was going to happen later, that I would put another one on the other side. So we're going to completely cut out a space in the middle here, first with the frame sticker, and then we're going to use that as a guide for where we cut out the paper that it is stuck to. I'm using a combination of a craft knife or Stanley knife with a metal ruler and also some scissors, depending on what's easier for that part of the setup. Anytime you're going to be removing some page, I recommend that you take it away before you do any more decorating or set out the functional elements of the page. Otherwise, you might end up making some mistakes and not leaving yourself enough space. So taking things away first is always good. Now we can turn the page and start on decorating the second spread, which is going to be important because you will obviously see part of it through that little window there. This washi tape is from the washi tape shop. It is their dream catcher set. It also comes with a white version. It is spectacular. I've used it so many times before I'm almost running out. And this PET tape you may have seen recently on my channel. It is from Journal Say and I just featured it in a haul in last week's video. So you can go and check that out if you'd like. I like how when you layer it next to each other like this, it looks like wallpaper, which is exactly what I was going for. And as soon as I saw this sticker of the girl with the crystal ball, I knew she had to be the feature of the cover spread this time around. So she is having pride of place in the window here. There are links to everything I'm using in this video in the description down below. I'm using a lot of stuff this time around. Lots of little pieces from all over. Lots of different shops featured, lots of different stickers, lots of different tapes. And this big Libra sticker had to have pride of place because it is my birthday month in October. So I wanted to make sure that I was using this sticker that I've had for a very long time in the most appropriate place for it in my October theme. Shout out to all of my fellow October babies. I know there are a lot of us out there. I know like four other people who share my birthday alone. So lots of Libras. These black and purple rose stickers are going to feature very heavily throughout this design too. I just thought they were the perfect blend of girly and delicate, but also a little bit gothic. And I love that. I really love letter stamps for a theme like this. I feel like they are the perfect intersection of easy to read, but also a little bit spooky just based on the fact that it's hard to get your lettering perfect when you're stamping these next to each other. I'm using them with the Artistro brush tip paint markers. I'm using specifically three of the metallic ones, a mauve kind of purple, gold and silver throughout this setup. I really like stamping with paint markers because you can get a much more vivid color than you would get with an ink pad. And also that means I have all of the colors of my paint markers available to me without having to buy a hundred ink pads to match all of the colors that I have in pens. You can also stamp with regular markers too if you're stamping onto white paper, but because I'm stamping onto black, I wanted to make sure they were paint markers this time so it would be nice and visible. And my quote this time is, magic can be found in stolen moments from Francesca Leah Black. I'm so excited with how magical this is looking. So that's the first spread just about decorated. But before we keep decorating, let's have a chat about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes designed to help you take the next step in your creative journey, whether that is honing your skills in a particular art style or learning how to monetize and market your hobby into an entire business of its own. And yes, in case you were wondering, they do have classes on bullet journaling on Skillshare, and I'm gonna use those as a little example here of one of my favorite features. 
You can use the filters on the left hand side to filter by difficulty level and things like staff picks or originals, but also you can filter by the class length. So if you only have a little bit of free time this week to learn something, you can select under 30 minutes and it will only show you classes that will fit into your schedule. On the flip side, if you were feeling like really sinking your teeth into a long and meaty class, you can select the over two hours option instead and it will only show you classes that are over two hours so you can get really in depth on whatever it is that you wanna learn. I only had a little bit of free time this time around so I've chosen this class making sticker sheets using Photoshop and Cricut by Amaya Jade. It is only 25 minutes long and in fact, I watched it on two times speed so it was actually half of that again. I've made die cut stickers with my Cricut before but I've never made a sticker sheet so I thought it would be really cool to learn how to do that. The way Amaya uses Photoshop to create the cut layer for her sticker sheets is absolutely genius. When I watched her do it, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Why did I never think of that myself? So I printed my stickers and I got the Cricut to cut them. And I do wanna mention that I'm using a different Cricut to the one that Amaya used. Some of the settings were a little bit different. So did I come away with a sticker sheet? Look, no, not really. I need to mess around with the settings a little bit more because they are different on my Cricut, but I'm still really happy to have made some stickers. Look how cute this cat is. The first 1000 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start learning straight away. Thanks again, Skillshare. And let's get back to decorating this spread. I didn't think about what you would see through the window from this side of the page, but I don't mind that it's kind of this little intersection of a few different things. I'm adding a little calendar on the right side that you won't see through the window, just underneath the girl with her crystal ball. This isn't really a functional calendar in any way. It's kind of just there for a visual aid, but I felt like it was a bit of a waste to do so much decoration just purely indulgently. So I wanted to have something that was a little bit bullet journal functional on the page too, even though it's not really a calendar that you use, it's just there. I'm having a lot of trouble with this glue tape at the moment. It started out great when I had first bought it, but it's struggling to come off the roll now and I don't know what the factor is there. So if you have any tips for me, please let me know. On the left side, obviously this page can't be particularly functional because it has a big hole in it. So I'm just decorating it with some more stickers and I'm going to add another one of these frames over the top because I felt like it looked a little bit unfinished without it. This is where I could have just added a frame on each side of the page and kept the plastic in the middle, but because I didn't do that, I'm going to remove it on this side as well. Thankfully this time I can just use the edges that we cut earlier as a guide and freehand trace over them with my craft knife. And then we have a very nicely cut window. I also wanted to add something to the middle of the crystal ball. So I'm using these stickers from Lace and Whimsy Studio. These ones say you are magic in this lovely old English kind of a font. And I thought that was perfect. They're the perfect size. They're the perfect amount of magic feeling. And that was just the little finishing touch that I was looking for. Look at how shiny this is. I'm in love with this cover spread. It was so much fun and so self-indulgent, although it did take me a little while to set up. Believe it or not, we're still not done with the decorative stuff. I have a lot more cutting to do before we can move on to the actual functional spreads. That's because I decided I wanted to do waterfall tabs here. I was completely inspired by the lovely Wits Journal. She made these beautiful waterfall tabs with a floral edge against a solid edge. And I thought they were so impactful, so stunning. And I wanted to give them my own take in this setup. So. I guess I could have used some of those rose stickers to do a floral edge the way that Wit did, but instead I've gone for this swirly kind of an alcohol ink marble pattern, which is actually a big washi sticker, which is amazing. I'm using that on the solid edges. So the one we're doing here at the moment is on the last page of the setup, which is going to be a weekly. And on the page before that, we'll have the textured edge or the one that follows the shape of a sticker. For that, I'm going to use some black paper so that it has some nice contrast against the gray of the next page. I'm using a lot of glue all over the paper again because I'm not sure which parts I'm going to cut off. And I'm also using a glue pen to make sure it goes all the way to the edges. Then over the top of that, I'm going to stick this beautiful holographic pattern, kind of a, not really lace, but somewhat lace kind of a design. The way it shows up against the black is so incredible. Unfortunately, it doesn't run the full vertical length of the page, so I'm having to harvest some edges from some of the others. Thankfully, the pack comes with several of the same in a sticker pack, so I can take little bits from some of the others and make it look like it goes further than it does. Then you just cut around the outside edge of the design, taking off the page as well as the black paper that's underneath, following the design of the sticker. Once that's removed, you'll be able to see the gray marbled paper that's underneath. It will peek through from behind this one. And I just love that beautiful contrast. The unexpected shape of the edge of the page is really cool. We repeat that going backwards through the pages. So you start from the last page and work your way back. 
That means this next one will have a solid edge, which will have more of that grey washi sticker on it. The one before that will have another kind of shapely edge, and we'll repeat that until we get back to the calendar spread. Then we'll get into the functional stuff. This is why I always say to cut first and then set up the rest of the spread because I actually thought I'd need to take off less of the page than I did, but I really wanted you to see that black come through underneath this one. So I've ended up taking one more row of boxes off the side of the page for these solid ones than I expected to, which means I had less page space for the functional things, but I hadn't set them up yet, so I could adjust as I went. And there we have the waterfall tabs. Are they not so beautiful? I thought about cutting a bit more off the second one, but I've decided to leave it how it is. Now we can get into the functional part of the spreads. This first one is my calendar spread. So I'm drawing out the calendar for October here. The right side is my smallest page because of the waterfall tab system. So I'm having only Saturday and Sunday columns on that side this time. And the rest of the week will fall on the left side, which means we have a little bit less space than usual for decoration, but that's okay because the first two spreads were all decoration. So I think that's a fair trade off. When you've been bullet journaling for a while, it's interesting to see how your style changes even when you're using some of the same things. So the Dreamcatcher washi tapes that I used earlier and also this one, this is the Starry Sky set from the washi tape shop, I actually used in my October setup two years ago and use them completely differently, which is kind of cool. So even though it's still an October setup and it still has sort of a somewhat witchy vibe, they look completely different in this setup. I think that's really interesting. With the calendar spread complete, let's turn the page. This spread is very small because of the waterfall tabs. There's not a lot that I could fit here. Thankfully, my goals, musings, and favorites page can stay mostly the same as usual. I'm drawing out three boxes here, one for where I'll put my goals for the month, where I'll keep track of my favorites, anything that I'm really into that month from anything in the world, media, food, colors, anything. And the bottom one is for musings, which is where I just write what's on my mind throughout that month so that I've got a little sort of self check-in. And of course, even on a tiny page, we still need room to decorate. So I'm leaving a bit of space at the bottom for some more washi tape and stickers. That part will actually blend over onto the right page with the elements over there. So we'll decorate that kind of all in one go. But in the meantime, we need to stamp some headings. I'm using a Tombow Fudonosuke brush pen this time, just because that's kind of my go-to for a black pen. But I actually think it didn't go so well over the paint marker. I think maybe I could have stuck to the paint markers for this one. So we'll have to see. I might switch to that one a little bit later on just for ease of use. The next page is for my one line a day section. Granted, it's not a full line again because of the smaller pages because of the waterfall tabs, but I think it's gonna be kind of a fun challenge to keep it to just a few words for every day. I kind of like that idea. So down the left side, I'm putting the number and the initial for each day of the month. So I know that if it's the first, it is also Sunday. And I like to differentiate that column with a little bit of color as well. So I'll use the Tombow Jewel Brush Pen in the 620, which is a very cool purple as well as the soft warm gray N89, which I'm using to highlight every second line. You need to go very slowly when you do this in order to keep your lines nice and straight. Of course, I've sped up the footage a little bit. This part, you just need to breathe and take your time and move your whole arm, even your torso, not just your wrist. And now we make it all pretty. Decorating on the right side here is actually a little bit tricky because I don't want any of my decorations to peek out behind the waterfall tabs. So whenever I'm sticking things down here, I'm just folding the page back so I can check that it's not visible once the other page is on top of it. 
I'm not entirely sure why I decided to hand letter this heading instead of stamping it. It would have fit with stamps. I think I just knew that editing the stamping process in post-production in video world is actually really annoying. So I was like, let's do future me a favor, even though I haven't hand lettered anything else anywhere else in this design, but I will add some more later. So never fear. These next two pages are for trackers. On the left side, I'll have the habit tracker and on the right side, the mood tracker. Because the page is a bit thinner than usual, I'm going to hand letter out all of my tracking this time for the habit tracker. Quite often I'll use the Fromemo MO2 mini printer and print the habit trackers to save my hand a little bit, but I wouldn't have been able to fit six on the page. I could have only probably done maybe three or four. So I've done it this way to keep things a little bit more page space efficient, if you will. So the way this tracker works is it is just a little calendar and you can color in or cross out or cross hatch the habit when you do it if you want to. I quite like to have a cross and then a color. So I'll probably use one of my Tombow brush pens, probably the purple one that I've used earlier to color in when I've done the habit and I'll put a cross through it when I haven't. Cause when I find I just leave it blank if I haven't done the habit, it's not as much of a um, motivating factor as it is having to cross it out and say to myself, you didn't do the thing. Why didn't you do the thing? I don't mind these habit trackers the way they are just sort of floating like this, but I've decided I want to box them in. Sometimes that just looks nice and I it would go with the calendar on the previous and also the goals, favorites, musings on the previous as well. So I'm going to just draw some lines around these calendars to give them that little bit of extra definition. I'm also going to add a little bit of color to the space at the top where the name of the habit will go and I'll make that one purple and the line underneath that where the initial for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday goes. I'm gonna color that one in as well with the same gray that we used on the previous spread. We're flipping back to the letter stamps for decoration on this one, and I actually think I may have left a bit too much negative space at the top of the habits page. I might go back to that throughout the month and add a few more stickers from the Lace and Whimsy sticker sheets because they're really cute and there's lots of space for them there. But as it stands, I just did some of this washi tape along the top and the habits heading lettered back to the stamps this time. And we're bringing that decoration over onto the right page as well, although I will end up changing my mind about the washi tape on the bottom on the right page there because I'm gonna need that space for something else. The right page here is for my mood tracker and I've never done one exactly like this before, but I've done kind of similar things with illustrative mood trackers where you draw a doodle for each day of the month. This time I'm going to use stamps, which is a bit different, but really fun. I got this new stamp set from the Quirky Cup Collective. It's the fantasy fiction set. Fantastic for the avid readers amongst us, especially if you like to read fantasy, but I'm using it in my journal because witchy vibes, right? We can get away with it this month and maybe, maybe this month only, maybe not. So I'm choosing four of the smaller stamps from the set so that they will fit nicely into the space. I'm going with the crown, the crystal ball, the skull, and this little potion bottle, which is very cute. And I'm going to stamp them along the bottom so that I have a little bit of a key to determine which one corresponds to which mood. The way I'm stamping them here is from left to right, it will be happiest to saddest. So I think it's kind of cute to make the skull like the very sad face. The crystal ball is a kind of a neutral. The potion bottle is having a pretty good day and the crown is a very good ecstatic day. I'm looking forward to using this. I think it's gonna be really fun. And I've left a little bit of black paper covering the side here because I can just stamp over that with the paint markers and it will be totally fine. So that's gonna be really cool. I can't wait to use this mood tracker for October. It's gonna be so much fun. This spread I always call my useful but boring spread or maybe like the ultra functional spread. The left page here is for my meal planner, which is something that has really helped me just having a plan for how I'm going to cook and meal prep for the week or for the month or for two weeks or however it works out. 
I don't do this very precisely, which is why it's not getting a proper calendar. It's just getting a one, two, three, four week kind of a space here instead of like a full, this is what I'm gonna eat on this specific date. I kind of just do it really loosely and I eat whatever's in the fridge, but it helps me know when I need to go shopping. It helps me know what I need to buy when I go shopping and it helps me to eat healthier and save some money throughout the month. So I definitely recommend giving a meal planner a go if it's not something that you have tried in your journal before. The right page is for my spending log, which is very skinny and squishy this time around because it has to fit into this narrow space. It's just the same table twice on the page, item, cost and category and I write down everything that I buy and at the end of the month I tally it all up and put it in my overall cash flow tracker. I feel like I don't need to explain it because I explain it in every video because I've been doing it the same way for a very long time. Usually the last page of the monthly setup pages is my content planner anyway, but that's worked out really well for this month because this is the widest of the pages that I have because of the waterfall tabs without getting into the full page spread that we're going to use for the first weekly. That's worked out really well because this is a calendar that I need a lot of space to write on. I have a full in-depth video about how I use this calendar to plan out my content for usually a whole month in advance. I did just the first week of September before because I was going on holidays and I didn't have time to set up the whole month. So sometimes it doesn't all happen in one go, but this is what keeps me sane and keeps my content pumping out throughout the month. So I can just sit down, do it all in one go and not have to think about it again. I love scheduling my content. Also, because I have to factor in sponsorships these days for some of my videos, it helps me to make sure that they're kind of spaced out so I'm not hitting you guys with advertising kind of stuff all of the time, which is really helpful. And it also makes sure that I keep posting to my photography account because honestly, the bullet journaling account is a lot more fun to post to. I don't love telling other people's stories, which is kind of what I do on my photography account because I am a wedding photographer. So it can be tricky sometimes to share things and not feel like I'm overstepping people's privacy. Whereas on my bullet journal account, it's just me so I can do whatever and it's all good. But having a social media presence is kind of a necessary evil if you run a business. So I have to keep posting stuff to that photography account. So I will continue doing it and having this spread makes me do it, which is really helpful. It's why I love it so much. It keeps me going. Only one spread to go now for this setup, and this is the first weekly for the month of October. This one I'm doing a box layout, but I'm staggering the boxes a little bit. So the top row is a little bit to the right and the bottom row is a little bit to the left. I just felt like that felt good for this page because there is that sort of wonky edge on the left side there from the waterfall tabs. So this kind of felt a little bit more comfortable. I can't really explain why. The second box that I'm gonna use for Tuesday though does cross the middle of the page and I had a bit of trouble working out how much space to allow for that because the middle of the page obviously isn't a regular box space. So I decided to white out some of these parts with a white paint marker and move some of these lines over a little bit to make it look a little bit more even and balanced. Each one of these boxes is nine spaces wide and 13 spaces tall. So for that middle one, I've made it as though the space between the last row of dots and the binding, the center of the page is one space. So that counts as two, kind of, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Then we can use that space on the left side of the Monday and on the right side of the Sunday boxes to add some pretty decoration because that is what I like to do with my journal. Every now and then I get a comment from someone saying like, this must have taken you so long. What's the point? Why do you bother? This is my art practice. In case you were wondering why I put so much effort into this, if you saw me painting some flowers in a sketchbook or something like that, you just think, oh, she does this as a hobby. That's her art practice. That's exactly what this is. It's just that it's also a diary that I use the rest of the month. So it can be both. 
And also I find pre-printed planners really boring and repetitive, so this way I get to have a good time, I get to have my little artistic outlet, I get to plan all of my stuff in a way that works for me, and then I get to put it on YouTube and share it with people who like to do the same thing that I like to do, and maybe it will inspire them, and maybe it won't, but either way, I had a great time. And that is why I do it, just in case you were wondering. And here she is, the completed October setup, all shiny and holographic and ready for spring because that's what it is here at the moment in Australia, it's spring. I hope you've enjoyed planning with me. It means the world to me that you've spent this time with me. So thank you so much for that. If you'd like to subscribe if you haven't already and stick around for next week's video, that will mean the world to me as well. And I do also have channel memberships in case you'd like to check those out. We have a private Discord server and we have members only live streams where we plan out for the next month. It's so much fun. Until next week, I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see you again then. Bye.